All right, this screencast is gonna pick up with the new SNCC and core. So essentially what we're gonna start seeing is it's not just new civil rights organizations that start to become more mili militant at the end of the civil rights movement. The already existing civil rights organizations are gonna start losing their patience and they um, too are uh, gonna start becoming a little more radical. And so I'm just going to give an example in which things between like MLK's organization, the SCLC, and then SNCC and CORE are kind of um, breaking and the relationships aren't going very well and they're not necessarily on the same page any longer. So I want to introduce a man named James Meredith. James Meredith is the man who successfully integrated Ole Miss University which was a very trying process in the 50s and 60s. Um, but he did successfully integrate it, even being met with adversity, and he kind of becomes a figure in the movement. He had organized this march that he himself was going to kind of lead um, and take charge of that would have been um, like from the border of Tennessee into Jackson, Mississippi. But on the second day of his march, um, someone shot him. Now, he, he didn't pass away, but he was injured to the point where he could not continue the march. So, because he's so well up in the movement, the other groups kind of want to come to his aid and, and complete the march for him. So, SCLC, CORE, and SNCC come together and decide that they are going to come together and um, continue the march in Meredith's honor. But at this meeting, when they're starting to organize and lead in the march, it's very clear that SNCC and CORE are starting to branch apart and become more radical, while MLK's group, the SCLC, are still trying to maintain their peaceful protest um, methods. And for example, MLK is actually present at this march, and he sees the tension kind of breaking out in the crowd where the the protesters aren't really agreeing with each other and they're starting to like hear some radical things he starts to lead the song we shall overcome and snick and core members start over singing and over chanting king saying we shall overrun which is a very much more radical approach to um, the overall movement Another example is when this man pictured on the screen, Stokely Carmichael, okay, and that's Stokely, S-T-O-K-E-L-Y, Carmichael, Carmichael, one word, okay. Um, he was the new leader of SNCC, and he was arrested in Mississippi, and the day after his arrest, it was a night, he showed up at this rally, and he gave this really impassionate speech. And the speech says um, a, a pretty famous quote. I'm going to read this to you. You don't have to write this down. You'll note the last words of the speech, and I'll make sure to highlight that for you. In his speech, he says, This is the 27th time I have been arrested, and I ain't, got, I ain't going to jail no more. We've been saying freedom for six years, and we ain't got nothing. What we're going to start saying now is black power. With those words, the black power movement was born. The black power movement focuses on African-American kind of culture, not supremacy, but kind of just like isolation from white society. Basically, some of these groups, like within the Black Power Movement, some groups such as SNCC and CORE, they're going to stop recruiting um, white um, members into their organization because they don't want to associate themselves with white people anymore because they feel like that is counterproductive to their movement. They want to put their own race and agenda at the forefront of the, their movement. And that is kind of the heart of the black power movement, this sense of black pride over unity um, of races, which is what they started out as. Because all these groups started out being equality, equality, interracial, interracial, and now we're just seeing a heavier influence this is not what SCLC is doing. King is actually still urging the others to stop using the term black power, but they're still going to use it, and it's still definitely relevant towards the end of the movement. The next group I want to talk about are the Black Panthers, um, and this is the Black Panther Party, 
and it's a group that kind of came out of the um, California region, specifically Oakland. So two men pictured on the screen, Huey Newton and Bobby Seal, Seal spelled S-E-A-L-E. They formed this radical organization called the Black Panther Party that was designed to fight police uh, brutality in ghettos, and specifically in the Oakland community. Now, the Black Panthers kind of have a bad rep in history books as being a very violent organization that's aimed at, like, destroying white society. Um, but honestly, the truth of the matter is, is that they were initially created, and you kind of, okay, looking at the pictures, you kind of see, like, the violent aspects in terms of, like, you see the men holding the guns, holding the bullets, holding the weapons. Like, you can understand definitely the radical approach they are taking. But their true mission was one of, like, defense and protecting themselves against the police brutality in the community. So not so much going on the aggressive, but more taking defensive measures. They basically saw what were happening, what was happening to all the nonviolent protesters across the country, and they didn't want to play the victim like those nonviolent groups. They saw people being beaten by police, being arrested, even killed, and they felt they needed to protect themselves, and that is why they choose to arm themselves. They start kind of having, like, just a neighborhood patrol, but eventually they do start carrying weapons with them everywhere, which is why they kind of have that intimidation factor about them. Um, different things that the program actually openly supported. They wanted housing to be improved. They wanted full employment opportunities from African Americans. Um, they also just wanted African American communities to be protected correctly by the police force. And um, they definitely had a look about them. They wore black berets, sunglasses, leather jackets. Um, they kind of almost had uniforms, just kind of like very um, militarized look about them. Again, more as a intimidation tactic than an actual aggressive measure. Just a side note, which I think is hilarious about them, this you don't even have to write this down. One of the things they did to make money was sell books or sell sell books, um, copies of books written by Mao Zedong. Um because he was a popular name and they were just like looked at as so radical, I guess, and because the book contained like communist ideals. People like associated the radical with the communists, but like they did not embrace communism at all, but it was just the way they made money, which I think is funny. Um, but with that being said, one of Mao Zedong's slogans was power flows out of the barrel of a gun, which just kind of re-emphasizes that emphasis or re re puts that emphasis on like military and weapons on safety and power. Um, there are many altercations between the Black Panther Party and the police force because of the weapons, obviously. But they did gain some support in lower ur um, class urban areas, inner city areas. And they also eventually gained recruits. Um, some people who were initially part of CORE and SNCC, as those are becoming more radical, they will actually leave CORE and SNCC for the even more radical, viewed as radical, um, group, which is the Black Panther Party.